Okay. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Nadine Andu and I'm the Director of the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. In attendance this evening is Dean Kazama, uh, Deputy Director, Randy Leong, the Cable Television Division Administrator, and others from the DCCA staff. The purpose of this public hearing is to afford all interested persons an opportunity to submit testimony, orally or in writing, on Hawaiian Telecom's application for cable television franchise in the County of Maui. We will give careful consideration to your testimony and any written testimony which has been submitted regarding Hawaiian Telecom's application. Speakers are asked to limit his or her comments to three minutes only. On February 19 and 26, a notice of public hearing was published in the Maui News newspaper. An amended notice was published on March 6. And additionally, the notice was posted to our cable television's website. A copy of the notice is available on the tables towards the back of the room. Okay, I will now um, go over uh, procedures for this afternoon and evening public hearing. Uh, First, Hawaiian Telecom will give a brief presentation of its application and then we'll commence the public testimony portion of the hearing. Uh, testimony will be taken in the order that the participants have signed in, either in person or online. Uh, we'll start with testifiers uh, that are in person first and then move on to any virtual testifiers um, after that. Uh, at the end of the registered testifiers, uh, we'll give the opportunity for any other people who uh, <clears throat> are willing to testify that have not signed up. If you do provide oral testimony or you testify today, we also encourage you to provide that testimony in writing to us by March 21st, 2024, uh, so that may, we may accurately record your comments in the record. Uh, if you have written testimony to, to support but do not wish to uh, provide testimony today in person or orally, uh, again, this, you are able to submit the written testimony to us again by March 21st. Uh, 2024. <clears throat> uh, when you are called to present, to testify, uh, either please come up, state your name, and if you are part of an organization, please state that organization, uh, whether in person or online. Uh, the virtual testifiers, um, our tech team will uh, notify you when it's your time to testify. A prompt will be displayed on your screen. Uh, please. Uh, Accept this invitation and unmute yourself. Again, the purpose of this public testimony is to gather your input, which is very important to us, whether orally or in writing. Uh, we therefore uh, will not be discussing your testimony during the public hearing portion of this or answering any questions that might be raised. Uh, and we'll begin. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm ready to start the hearing at this point. Um, and as a courtesy to others, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones or otherwise mute it down so there's no, no noise interference. So first up to provide testimony on the application will be Steve Golden, uh, which will provide Hawaiian Telecom summary of its intentions and its application. Good afternoon, I'm Director Ando and Deputy Director Hazama, Cable TV Administrator Leong and Cable Division uh, staff and members of the community. I'm Steve Golden, Vice President of External Affairs for Hawaiian Telecom. And with me is Michelle Lemkiel, Hawaiian Telecom's Vice President of Consumer Strategies and Sales and Shauna Russell, Product Manager, Consumer Markets. I'd like to thank DCCA for scheduling this meeting and for members of the public for who have taken the time to attend the meeting. We value your input and will carefully consider all comments presented. Hawaiian Telecom filed this application for a 15-year cable television franchise for the County of Maui on December 8, 2023. Hawaiian Telecom launched its TV service on Oahu in 2011. This experience makes us well positioned to successfully launch TV services in Maui County. Our TV service will bring 100% digital video programming delivered over a dedicated fiber internet connection. It features an interactive and cross-platform viewing experience for our customers. 
Today, I'll briefly cover Hawaiian Telecom commitment to the state and the residents of Maui, Molokai, and Lanai. The video technology programming and features will be deployed, and the community benefits our entry into the TV market will provide. Last year, Hawaiian Telecom proudly celebrate our 140 years of building connections in our island. Our company's roots and commitment to innovation began in 1883 when our visionary monarch, King David Kalakaua, granted Mutual Telephone Company, now known as Hawaiian Telecom, a charter to provide telephone service. Over the years, we've evolved into a technology company that is committed to bridging Hawaii's digital divide by expanding its fiber network to enable broadband access throughout the state. Last year alone, we invested over $223 million in private capital to expand our fiber network, which enables access to our fast, reliable, and affordable broadband internet service known as Bioptics. Bioptics offers speeds of up to 1 gigabit per second downstream and 500 megabits per second upstream. Hawaiian Telecom helped close the digital divide in Maui County by enabling access to Bioptics to more than 34,000 locations on Maui, over 95% of all Molokai households and businesses. And in June of 2023, Lanai became the first island where residents and businesses island-wide were enabled for access to Hawaiian Telecom's fiber, uh, fi fi optics internet. We are incredibly fortunate to call Hawaii our home and our team of dedicated employees share a sense of kuleana to help improve our island state. And this goes beyond our fiber build. We're proud to support the nonprofit organizations that are doing important work in Maui County, like, like the Maui, Molokai, and Lanai, Aloha United Ways, Maui Economic Development Board, Molokai Resource Fair, and recently we made a donation of $3 million to the Hawaii Community Foundation's Maui Strong Fund. Hawaiian Telecom's TV service, known as Bioptics Plus, is delivered via a dedicated fiber to the home broadband connection. It is the latest and most advanced medium for transmission of video content. Hawaiian Telecom's 100% digital internet protocol TV provides a range of benefits compared to traditional cable TV, which is delivered over coaxial cable. Bioptics Plus provides customers a best-in-the-class entertainment experience by incorporating traditional video service with the power of Android TV. This platform combines standard linear TV with direct-to-consumer app such as Netflix, Disney Plus, and YouTube, as well as universal search cap capabilities and cloud services. Bioptics Plus includes superior picture and audio quality and a wider range of content and channel, as well as cost and energy speaking. Hawaiian Telecom's programming lineup with over 300 channels is very competitive to what's currently offered by cable and direct broadcast satellite providers and includes locally broadcast TV stations such as KHON, KITV, KGMB, and KHNL. Cable channels including CNN, Bravo, and Discovery Network, premium pay-per-view pay channels like HBO, Showtime, Stars, Disney+, Plus, and music channels via Stingray. Hawaiian Telecom recognizes the importance of public education and government access channels to our community, and we are committed to working closely with DCC and Akaku Maui Community Media. In closing, granting Hawaiian Telecom a cable television franchise will directly benefit our customers and all residents of Maui County by allowing them choices they've never had before to purchase video service bundled with our fiber optics net internet and voice services all in a single bill i want to thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony today thank you thank you hey thank you mr golden at this time we will open up for the public testimony um so our first testifier is uh, mr imada Lee Imada. thank you testify. Um, i'm lee imada executive assistant at Maui Economic Opportunity. We're a 59-year-old community action nonprofit agency that helps improve the lives of low-income kupuna youth, persons with disabilities, and other disenfranchised residents of Maui County. We provide an assortment of programs, including rental and utility assistance, free Head Start preschool, Maui bus paratransit, and currently wildfire relief assistance. Emil has offices in East Maui, Molokai, and Lanai. We're speaking in favor of granting Hawaiian Telecom a cable franchise in Maui County. 
because competition likely will favor clients that we serve. Cable TV has become a staple of life, especially for Kupuna, who avidly watch their K-dramas, Wheel of Fortune, and other shows. In recent years, the cost of cable TV, even when services are bundled, have risen significantly beyond the reach of some of the people that we serve. Currently, in most cases, the only options are having cable TV or not having cable TV. Our hope is that competition will reduce prices and improve, improve packages and services not just on cable TV, but the essential internet service. MEO has been involved in expansion of broadband services to underserved communities in Hawaii and the education of those who have not yet fully entered the internet age. Cable TV may be optional for some, but internet is a necessity in today's world, making affordability a critical issue. We also believe that another cable TV franchise will benefit our friends at Akaku Maui Community Media, who are relegated to the lower non-HD TV sections of the channel lineup. MEO and the Public Access Station have collaborated on segments on Akaku's The Maui Daily News Program and on PSAs. Better visibility for Akaku also could benefit MEO. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Don Adam James. Hi. Thank you for taking the time to, to hear us. Uh, my legal name is Don Adam James, and I do work at Akaku Maui Community Media. And I'm really proud to be associated with a station that stands for free speech and unbiased communication. When I was a kid growing up, uh, Jay Aku Head Papuli was the only guy that could do news and comment. Everybody else just did news, and if you had a controversial story, you went and you got the other side, you gave equal time. And I really feel that Akaku continues to hold that bar for the news that we do and for our community producers, giving them a voice to say just about anything except, you know, shouting fire in a crowded room. And I'd love to see our public information, public access reach a wider audience and of course be in high def for the first time would be wonderful also. Now the rest of my testimony is just as a private Maui citizen and TV watcher, a Kapuna couch potato, I guess. And I just want to tell you that I do really believe that more competition and diversity in the delivery of TV station content to the home is always better. I have not paid to watch Hawaiian TV stations for the past nine years due to the high prices and low quality of oceanic, I'm sorry, I mean charter, no, I mean, sorry, pronouns, the cable monopoly currently identifying as Spectrum. I get my high def TV over the air with an antenna, old school style, but unfortunately sometimes the Honolulu TV stations seem to not make it a priority to keep the outer island repeater stations transmitters repaired too quickly when they fail. Hawaiian Tel has provided me with better internet speeds and lower costs than getting it through the cable, Spectrum cable, and that uh, I've experienced that both on the Big Island and on Maui. I've also observed what has appeared to be a strong effort, this is just my amateur opinion, uh, see a, what appears to be a strong effort on the part of Hawaiian Tel to bring the fiber optic speed and bandwidth out to the most remote and underserved areas like Puna and Red Road on the Big Island and uh, places on Maui, I know they're doing the same. Uh, so I'm not an expert in all the details, but I do feel they should be rewarded for that effort and we should all be rewarded with the lower prices and higher quality that can be delivered through competition to all of Maui Nui and uh, by welcoming another cable franchise that respects the public interest rules uh, that have been long established through the DCCA and other local laws. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Golden, you have additional testimony? No? No. Okay. Uh, Rebecca Lieberman. Good afternoon. Happy to see you all again. Um, my name is Rebecca Lieberman, and I'm here on behalf of Charter Communications. Thank you again for the opportunity to provide comments on Hawaiian Telecom's application for a new cable franchise on the island of Maui. 
DCCA's consideration of Hawaiian Telecom's franchise application coincides with Charter's ongoing renewal of our existing Maui franchise agreements. Charter's Maui franchises expired more than 10 years ago and has continued on short-term extensions since that time. Charter remains committed to renewing this franchise and encourages DCCA to take the unique opportunity presented here. DCCA should negotiate Charter's renewal simultaneously with Hawaiian Telecom's initial franchise to establish a uniform, competitively neutral, and equitable landscape under which both providers can operate. Charter welcomes fair competition. When fairly and equitably regulated, competition can enhance customer choice, service quality, access, and pricing. Charter respectfully requests that DCCA consider the following issues when evaluating both our renewal and Hawaiian Telecom's application. Service area requirements, INET requirements, local in-person customer service and support, provision of service to public buildings and schools, provision of PEG access channels, and support for PEG programming through annual operating fee payments and annual capital fund payments. On Oahu, where both companies currently provide service, there are disparities with respect to some franchise obligations, including build-out, PEG, and INET commitments. As DCCA considers Hawaiian Telecom's application and Charter's renewal, the department should ensure that no such disparities exist in the Maui franchises granted to both providers. Finally, although Charter appreciates this opportunity to comment on Hawaiian Telecom's application, we note that significant portions of the application were submitted confidentially and not available to review by members of the public. Mahalo for this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Weiss. Hello, Hello. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Daniel Weiss. I am um, both a resident of Maui County and marketing manager at Akaku Maui Community Media. Uh, so I'd like to start by just saying uh, I think we can all agree now more than ever is a time that uh, we all need to have 100% transparency with um, with our neighbors in the Tri-County Islands um, of Maui. Um, after the fires, I think, you know, with disappearing news divisions, we really need um, to be informed. And I can only speak to the application that I read. Uh, I noticed a lot of redactions, and I understand from Rebecca's testimony, a lot of things are confidential. Um, so with that said, um, the testimony um, I've got is in support of the Hawaiian Telecom Services Company's uh, HTSC's application to operate a new cable television franchise in Maui County, provided that the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, DCCA, leverages its authority to ensure that HTSC provides tangible public benefits in exchange for the use of publicly owned rights of way. Competition in the cable television market under proper regulatory oversight may lead to improved services and benefits for con consumers, such as higher quality service and robust support for public educational and government PEG uh, access channels. Key points highlighted include the necessity for HDSC to commit to uh, transmitting PEG channels at no cost and offering on-demand channels to PEG upon request and building fiber to the home infrastructure to all of Maui Nui with more than 15 homes per aerial mile in a firm, reasonable time frame. Highest priority for, is for HDSC to commit to and the DCCA guarantee that franchise fees fully support community communications at minimum, current uh, or improved levels, 3% of gross revenue to PEG provider and $3 per subscriber in annual capital payments despite technological changes for the duration of the franchise term. HDSC shall cover all costs associated with PEG transmission equipment and maintaining current PEG channel designations. Requiring HDSC to support economic development and education through INET and related services to community anchor institutions without impacting franchise fee payments. No deduction from franchise fees for drops to schools, etc. Setting clear build-out requirements to ensure comprehensive service coverage implements stronger uh, customer service standards, including rate of transparency, as I mentioned before, and local management uh, presence to address local consumer needs. Um, certainly, um, I think we would all be um, happier to watch PEG channels in HD. Um, currently, we only have that on uh, for Akaku online and on our Maui Stream app. Um, and the other thing that would be really nice to have access to, especially as my role as a marketer, is um, analytics. Who's watching? 
it would be really nice to see that from Hawaiian Tel as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next testifier is Chiro Ching Johnson. Okay. Can I can I go to a little bit later and continue oh. to do this, please? Sure. Thank you okay. very much. Lisa Darcy. Aloha, good afternoon. My name is Lisa Darcy. I'm the founder of Share Your Mana and um, a very active Maui community member. Mahalo Nui Loa for this opportunity to provide testimony. Um, my testimony is in support of Hawaiian Telcon Services application to operate a new cable television franchise in Maui County provided that the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, the DCCA, leverages its authority to ensure that HTSC provides tangible public benefits in exchange for the use of publicly owned rights of way. Competition in the cable television market under proper regulatory oversight may lead to improved services and benefits for consumers, such as higher quality service and robust support for public, educational, and governmental access channels. Key points include um, many which you will probably hear from other people. Uh, the sphere that, uh, that I um, operate in is knowing that there are very few outlets or uh, people who have very few means in the community. Akaku always has its door open. It is um, non-judgmental. It provides extraordinary access when this community has very little access to insights to what's going on in the community. We don't have a, we cannot have a strong uh, newspaper system. We do not have um, other, we don't have our own real television station except for Akaku. It, it, it really reaches a lot of people who, um, who need the access in the way that this is set up. I really appreciate your time today and I hope that you all support this. Thank you. Let's see if I mispronounce this then. Um, Bella Kirby? Kirby? Bill? Bill? No, I will not be speaking this time. Oh. I'll submit written. Okay. Thank you. Uh, J. April. Welcome, Director, Deputy Director, Randy, good to see you. Thanks for coming over. Um, this place is quite a maze to find. I mean, I was lost in the hallways for about 10 minutes. <laughs> um, also, you probably couldn't have picked a worse day to come over. There's so much going on on Maui today. We just came from a broadband hui meeting that was really significant over on the other side of the island. Um, Lahaina has their weekly uh, fire meetings, community meetings in Lahaina uh, a couple hours from now. It was also a, a creative industries meeting today. So a lot of the people that would normally come to this meeting uh, were unable to. So, um, um, and of course I asked earlier if you could have hearings on Molokai and Hanai as well, and that, uh, that request was refused. And traditionally the DCC has always done that. So I know times have changed and people Zoom now, but um, you know, I think it would have been more uh, equitable for the department to have hearings on places that, you know, people can't come to Maui from the night in Molokai. Hana is quite a drive from here as well. So having said that, I don't often agree with Spectrum, but I definitely re agree with Rebecca's uh, testimony regarding the uh, Hawaiian Tel proposal. It read like Swiss cheese. Almost everything in it was redacted. Uh, particularly the areas with respect to public education and government access. It said, well, are you going to fund uh, uh, PEG access? And the application said, we're going to discuss that with the DCCA, the appropriate amount. I was happy to see in the proposal that uh, Hawaiian Tel will be bringing fiber to the home. That's really significant. Um, I was also happy to, to see in the proposal that Hawaiian Tel was offering high-definition television something we've been asking the DCCA to uh, provide for at least a dozen years. 
The former director, Kaylee Lopez, um, actually wrote, I don't know if it was a letter order, but a letter, I think it was 2012, asking that uh, the provider on Maui um, um, uh, put in uh, high definition channels. Basically, I think she phrased it as channels with equivalent signal quality of uh, nationally affiliated broadcast stations in Hawaii. I mean, it's basically an anti-competitive practice. It puts the peg channels in sort of a uh, second-class citizen status when it comes to viewing. Um, I know there's a, there's a debate whether you have the authority to mandate that sort of thing or not, but I was also glad to hear Spectrum say that they're up for renewal. That renewal was supposed to happen in 2018. So maybe during the renewal process you'll be able to uh, uh, exact a, a requirement for high-definition television. I mean, all video equipment in the world is high-definition. Um, it's, it's really unfair that uh, the current franchise provider does not have it. So I was good to see, it was good to see Hawaiian Intel uh, stepping up to the plate, as they have in Oahu to provide. So uh, I have written testimony. I'm not going to go through the written testimony, but I have a few, a few other comments. When it comes to the um, franchise fees, um, obviously franchise fees traditionally have in Hawaii, and I think it's been a great thing, it's helped stabilize PEG in Hawaii, 3% of gross revenue. And that's kept us going. It's, I think it still represents close to 80% of our revenue. So it's really what, what drives us, keeps us going. Uh, obviously, we see so many changes in the industry right now. It's, I was actually surprised that uh, Hawaii Intel was offering a cable service. I said, well, why don't you just keep going with the Internet? Why, why offer a cable service? It would be interesting to find out why. But then when you think about it, um, you know, by bundling cable with Internet with, with voice, they can provide some pretty vigorous uh, competition to Spectrum. As a matter of fact, their, their speeds are higher, their, their prices are better right now on the Internet side. So uh, I think it's great that Hawaiian Hotel is going to come in here and give Spectrum a run for its money. Um, Spectrum doesn't even have any local management in Hawaii. I mean, if you want to talk to anyone that has any decision-making power in their policy arena, you're going to call California. So it would be great if Hawaiian Hotel could bring some local uh, management uh, onto our islands, even onto the rural islands, so when people have issues that they can't deal with at the sales office, that they can actually uh, get some answers. Um, so the franchise fee issue is, is, is really important. Um, as we move forward, the technology is going to change, at, as you know, at rapid speeds. We're getting into a world of AI. Who knows what cable is going to look like 15 years down the road? I mean, we may have robots testifying <laughs> 15 years from now. I mean, your kids may be falling in love with AI girls and boyfriends. We don't know. But what we'd like the DCCA to do is, um, is make sure that for the next 15 years, our community needs, our public benefits are uh, taken care of. And the DCCA has been, actually been pretty good in that area for, for, for the time it's been around. I mean, Hawaii state law has done a good job in protecting the public interest overall in the big picture. Um, but there was a conflict in the application. Uh, traditionally, for oh maybe 50 years, when cable companies come in to bid on a franchise, they offer all kinds of bells and whistles, right, to make sure that they get it. Obviously, the biggest bells and whistles that they've offered traditionally are something called the INET, right, the institutional network, and drops to schools and community anchor institutions like fire departments and police departments and libraries and community centers. Now, I will say this. A lot of those resources have been squandered in different franchise areas because they haven't been operated properly. And some cable companies have the point of view that it's a waste of money to put in all that infrastructure. Regardless, this has been a traditional part of um, community benefit for at least 50 years in almost every franchise in the country. And there are places that have robustly harnessed that, uh, that I know. Like look at Montgomery County, for instance. They have a whole ring of telemedicine that functions on the INET. So the INET is important. Where those drops are, are important. They are significant public benefit to uh, our society. But in the application, Hawaiian Tell says, well, if you're asking for drops to schools or you're asking for drops to libraries, that's going to have to come out of the 5% franchise fee. So think about it. If I don't know how much they would charge for a drop, but if they start subtracting dollars from the franchise fee, how much money is going to be left for pay? How much money is going to be left at all? So it's just an end around on the part of uh, Hawaiian Tell to basically get out of an obligation that's been around for 50 years. There is an FCC rule that allows it, 
But that FCC rule is currently being litigated, and a court has already remanded that rule. So that thing's still up in the air. Many cable companies have not activated that option and probably won't until the cases are taken care of in the courts. But for Hawaiian Tell to come out with its application and say, no, that's what we're going to do, I think it's arrogant. I don't think it's fair. And I think it's up to the DCCA to ask them or to amend their application to voluntarily supply drops to schools and libraries. It doesn't have to be every school. It doesn't have to be every library. It doesn't have to be every fire department. But, you know, have a reasonable INET plan that uh, doesn't detract from the franchise fees that are not only due to your regulatory agency that belong to us and to PBS. So I would like to see that happen without any infringement on the franchise fees. Um, in terms of uh, the build-out, um, I think, I, I'm not sure what your, how many homes per mile you have right now at DCD. I don't know if it's 15 or 25 for them to build out fiber to the home. I suggest it should be 15. Any place in Maui that has less than 15 homes per mile, you don't have to build. But if it's 15 or more, you got to build. You can't just come in and say, look, I'm just going to build Wailea, or I'm just going to build you know, the areas that are most beneficial to our business. Cable needs to be built out through all of Maui Nui, fiber to the home, on a reasonable, obviously on a reasonable time frame. If you look at the application, there's no time frame, none. They'll discuss that with you guys later. So my concern was that the application itself is really specious. For someone like me, I've been involved in cable for 40 years. Cable franchising, I've operated, I've, I've started cable networks. There's not much about cable that I don't, haven't been educated about. I may not have the expertise that you have as regulators, but I do know the business. And you can't allow a cable company to just build up part of the island. You have to give them a, a, a schedule that makes sense. And I think, you, I think you guys can do that. You're equipped to do that. So if, if Hawaiian Tel is allowed to come into Maui, and I hope that they are because I think the competition is going to be great, I think that they need to build out on a reasonable schedule. And eventually, as they get more and more profitable, that they uh, eventually cover as much of the island, of, of our three island county as possible. Um, and, you know, your predecessor, Kaylee Lopez, one of your predecessors, um, said to me when they transfer the franchise from um, Oceanic to Spectrum. That was the time that the DCCA should have demanded that they require high definition channels for Maui. She said, we missed the boat. So hopefully this time you won't miss the boat, that you'll uh, dot the I's and cross the T's and uh, enhance our public benefit on Maui because this is a resource that we need uh, neighbor islands don't have um, the kind of uh, reporting that you have on Oahu, right? I think Akaku basically is our only local news, pretty much, and it's how we stay connected. We don't use algorithms to push people to sensational, um, attention-getting, bizarre cat videos. You know, we try to be relevant. Matter of fact, we're even we're even going to um, broadcast this rather boring meeting. You know, and there are people that are going to be interested in it. So the good thing is that you're here. Thanks for coming. I support the Hawaiian Tell um, application with your vigilance and with your guidance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To testify is uh, Gene Zaro. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. After a couple laps around the building and three flights of stairs, I'm ready for a nap. But, uh, how are you this afternoon? And thank you for coming. I appreciate you being here. Um, I'm not going to rely on those. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is quite simple. As you can see, Akaku is very important to the citizens of Maui County. Um, like Jay said, it is our only news report, but it is also um, the... Uh, the media access for the creative side of Maui, or the informational side of Maui. And I feel it is the, in this transaction, I feel it is the DCCA's responsibility to look after our interests, not just Hawaii Telecom. I am in support of Hawaii Telecom's application, 
but I think it's very important that you also look at our interests. And I would like to know in the spirit of transparency that we will be filled in on the trans on the negotiations, because it will be some kind of negotiation, I assume. Uh, that take place? Is there a way we could get the information as to how things are going so that we may be able to comment on some of the proposals going back and forth? Um, the reason I ask you to watch out for our interests is because Hawaii Telecom, like Spectrum, uses public right-of-ways to deliver their product. And that is why there is uh, franchise fees and, and the gross income and all of that to serve some type of community benefit. There should be a community benefit to the citizens of Maui County when someone is utilizing Maui County's public resources. It, it's like rent. We, we're not giving it away. It is something that is very important to them and we should realize that it's important to them to have the public access, uh, to have access to the public right of ways. So if it's important to them, let's get something for the citizens of Maui County. Maui County has suffered a lot this year and we need more. And the rural communities need more. And this has to be a real firm, stable infrastructure, not the kind of infrastructure that went down in Lahaina. We need a very firm, strong, infrastructure. This is the time we can get what we need because Spectrum is asking for their renewal. Hawaii Telecom is looking for an application. This is the time to rewrite it in favor of the citizens of Maui County. Thank you. Thank you. Our next fire is Catch Tracy. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to read uh, the application itself until last night, which I was like going, oh, 94 pages, what I get myself into. So um, I was just kind of skimming through some of the things, and uh, I see that what other people mentioned is that there's some ambiguity in some of the language within the application. Um, Specifically talking about PEG access is the annual access operating fees and capital funds would be willing to be discussed with an appropriate annual access fee payment. Not a specification that they would give the max of 5% like the other um, operator we have, the franchise operator in the state. Um, also, I didn't see um, a lot of things were redacted. And I didn't see that they mentioned that all video outlets and devices and the technologies they're going to use would carry off of who channels. So we see with Spectrum that they're pushing people to streaming with a Zumo box of which the PEG access centers are not on currently. Um, so I, I'd, like some, I'd like to see some specific language uh, that's, that states that. Um, they also, the gentleman earlier stated that they have one gigabit service. We don't currently have that at Alkaku, and we don't currently see that on the FCC broadband map, that fiber is, is everywhere as they're purporting. In fact, we tried to run an event on Molokai at an MEO center that had a streaming component, and we had to change locations because they were on Hawaiian Tel and they did not even have enough speed there to be able to service our needs uh, for streaming a uh, film and discussion. Um, so I don't know what they're purporting. It looks like a very small percentage that I saw. In fact, I want to call attention to that they're talking about delivering video services only over FTTP, fiber to the home, right? And that's a very small number of homes currently with fiber technology to the home here in Maui County. It's not as large. So their, their, their application is talking about um, only, ser only providing video services to those homes without any timeline, as Jay was mentioning, on a build out for the rest of the islands in Maui, that make up Maui County. So they want to launch a commercial Phi Optics Plus service to their already 
fibered homes, which is very small, with no timeline for future infrastructure. So um, they also state that they're going to provide PEG access through connected services, but then they said that they don't have a potential, it's not spelled out about the interconnected lines. So there's, if it's connected, they'll, they'll provide it. But then they talk later in the application about interconnectivity. That is yet to be defined, and who pays for that. So the PEG channels, hopefully, are, uh, they will cover not only, they say HTSC is willing to cover the cost for direct connection to PEG access. But later in the application, they talk about interconnectivity to be determined as to who will pay for that. So. What, it's not spelled out what the interconnectivity needs are to get to the direct connection to PEG access. Um, we would like to have on demand. I noticed they mentioned that um, it has not been requested on Oahu, but it would be requested here. Um, we'd also want to, they said they're willing to provide the channel number placement similar to existing Oahu franchise, but they don't say that they're actually going to keep our channel designations. Um, also about the PSAs, that there would be 2,000 PSAs of at least 30 seconds in length cable cast on other channels per calendar year for the use by state and county agencies, not by the PEG channels themselves. So I'm not sure that's something that's of a benefit to the community and or to the PEG access centers. Um, again, uh, Jay mentioned the third report in order that they mentioned several times in the application for drops for the INET and to uh, institutions like schools and libraries, et cetera, um, as be offsetted by the franchise fee cap of 5%. I think that they should be held to the current, um, to the current uh, nor norm, which is to provide those and volunteer to provide those at no cost to the PEG affecting the PEG franchise fees, and as Jay said, it would also affect um, PBS, Hawaii. So Phi Optics, again, is only FTTP, um, so that I don't see any build out for anything other than who they, what they are currently have. Um, again, they mentioned that uh, the FCC thing several times. Uh, they're not mentioning the uh, expansion plans. And, um, and then left for, yeah, so re really if they're going to start to tap the franchise fees without any additional build out, but only provide video services to their current F, uh, fiber homes in Maui County, there will be nothing left of the franchise fees for PBS and for the PEG access, even though they're saying that they're willing to pay something in actuality, if that's the case and you let that fly, there'll be nothing. Um, Again, interconnectivity, um, and they talk about that they're going to have uh, the PEG, the PEG inter uh, connectivity uh, before their commercial launch, so, um, but then not specifying the interconnectivity. And then uh, I also noticed that their, that their uh, HD profile is 1280 by 720. They don't actually have 1980 by uh, 1910 by 1280 uh, HD pass through. And um, overall, what I wanted to come away with is that I'd like to have you guys uh, at least before issuing a DNO or a, a, a license that overall we welcome with the right details uh, made public to have another public hearing before executing that so that we can see what, what the actual details that are now redacted and the details that are now ambiguous um, detailed out for us to peruse. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Uh, Sean McLaughlin. Uh, director and yeah. Deputy Cable Administrator, thanks for being here. Um, appreciate you. I'm Sean Taketa McLaughlin, and I'm testifying as a private citizen. Um, 
I just want to note for folks who may not be aware, and you, I know you are, this is one of three applications for neighbor island service. And I think what you, I hope you've heard on other islands that you're certainly hearing here is the community access television is the only television stations for three counties. Uh, so it's a pretty different situation than Oahu in that regard. Um, my interest really is the information ecosystem, how people are informed, how they get access. So personally, I'm really interested in the uh, relationships between digital equity and broadband access and cable TV and cable access. And I know DCCA has not been much involved with the broadband world, even though nominally you have a, you've had a role to play um, in digital equity mapping and so forth. We just came from a digital equity meeting here on the island, and we know that the mapping has just been horrific over the history of, uh, of Hawaii. And I, I, I was entertained by uh, Mr. Golden's comment that Hawaiian Telecom is operating under a charter from the kingdom because I don't know how to appeal to the kingdom for a review of that charter. <laughs> um, so it sort of puts all that out of reach. But what reminds me is they weren't, the kingdom didn't do cable franchises. Um, and also that the PUC is nominally an agency under the DCCA. And so one of my requests to you is that you really look at the public policy implications on cable and on telecom and think of a way to coordinate the policy work in both realms. And the, and the reason that I bring that up is for a really big picture is from my perspective, and I'm an old timer, um, you have inherited a, a division, a regulatory division that has been subject to regulatory capture. You have not been an independent agency for quite a while. And so I look to the new administration and say, this is your chance to really demonstrate that you're an independent agency. I mean, it's almost unimaginable that charter spectrum representatives were on the governor's committee vetting appointees. I mean, did that happen? If it did, it sort of is an indication, maybe we have regulatory capture by the former monopoly cable provider. Um, so really, your opportunity here is, as has been stated, and I really appreciate Rebecca sort of reminding us that the renewal for charter is up because you have a chance to look at the whole social contract and make it not only fair between the competitors, but fair for the community. We, I, I mentioned regulatory capture. I don't say that lightly. I say that because when I was here working with the county and we did a cable franchise renewal, there was an obligation in the franchise, crystal clear, INET obligation, 50 plus sites, every county building was going to get dark fiber and the county was going to be able to activate that fiber, we would have a publicly owned broadband network in Maui County right now, except the cable administrator at the time quietly re relieved them of that obligation. What happened? We don't know. But the point is, you're not bound by that. The beauty is, with, a, with both cable franchises, sub you get to rewrite that social contract and look at... Um, I mean, the basic outline is you've got absentee-owned companies running these services and extracting revenue from our state, and the money is leaving our state. And you're the only ones who say, leave this much here for the community. This is your obligation. The social contract is you will provide channels, you will provide resources and facilities so the community can have a voice. And on neighbor islands, it's the only voice on TV that's available. So I really, I, I know it's a big job and you're, you're sort of new to this realm, but please, please, maybe give them a super short one and come back around and say, let's look at the national landscape. Let's look at the, in, the relationship of broadband equity, digital equity, and information ecosystems. And let's talk to the PUC. Back in the day, Yukio Naito at the PUC did a communications infrastructure docket. This is ancient history, 1997. But nothing's been done since. PUC has no telecom capacity. They're doing nothing. Um, so the, having a charter from the king sticks because there's nobody else looking at it. So um, it's too late for me to get a charter from the kingdom. Um, but I really think that you have an opportunity at this new administration to really deeply review the social contract and say these corporations that don't that aren't from here that are taking money out of the islands what is their necessary investment in this community to make that okay 
And um, in terms of process, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm remember back in the day when the hearings happened on every island and Hana too. And uh, you will hear from people if there's if there's engagement, if there's trust. Honestly, I don't know how many people really trust the DCCA to be an independent agency in terms of cable right now. Um, the history would tell you not to, but I'm not. I, I'm just pointing that out because you inherited that. That's not your doing. So my last request is um, because the application is so thin and hard, to, and there's no indication of where the DCCA might go with it, and those are private conversations. I really hope that you will open comments on a proposed decision and order and provide an, op an opportunity for folks to, particularly folks who have background and knowledge about cable around the country, to help advise you when you have your proposed DNO to sort of uh, help you evaluate that. And uh, again, I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, Ludwig Lau. Hello. Hello. Well, my name is Ludwig Lau, and uh, I'm here because I have an interest in communication and education. I've been a photojournalist for some 60 years, and uh, we all know right and wrong, and we all know monopoly. Therefore, I urge you to vote for competition. Vote for competition and against monopoly. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kanan? Aloha. Um, well, thanks for letting us come and share our, our hopes with you. I've been a 25-year uh, resident of Maui and 20-year producer at Akaku Community TV station and the radio station there as well. And um, I'm in favor of this because, first of all, I took a little note, so I hope you don't mind me referring to them. As we all know, Spectrum's a monopoly, and monopolies in America aren't just, you know, looked favorably upon. And this provides a lot of chance for people to have competition in the market. And I feel like, more importantly than that, it's a real opportunity. As a 25-year as resident, I've watched the community voice at Akaku every year. It's, a, it's almost a struggle to get the voice out there, to get representation with Spectrum. It's been, every year, like a, a challenge just to get the basic representation that we deserve. I think this will give us a chance to set that representation up in a really phenomenal way. Um, I'm also a resident of Lahaina for the last 13 years, and after the fires, it became more apparent to me than ever the need for a community voice, for our community to really have uh, a focal point. And, and Akaku has been that, but um, at, a, at a great struggle all these years. Um, the benefits are obvious. It's, I wrote them down here. We're going to get potential faster internet speeds, uh, guaranteed funding of community media into the future, and that's regardless of the technology. That's, what they're, that's they're an opportunity for us because that's been a big struggle as well every year trying to get the funding over and over again. Um, and more fiber in homes, which means more connectivity. And I think, you know, to sum it all up and come back into a concise point, it's just an opportunity for us as an island to have representation for our community. And for young people, I mean, Akaku has been, these many years, a place where young people, old people, disabled people, everyone from every spectrum culture has gone there and had a voice. And so I hope that you'll consider that when you make your decision because it's really important to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Skog. Um, he told me who you were. I'm like, oh, this is great. Thanks for coming to Maui to come and hear us. We really appreciate that because otherwise there's that challenge of how to be heard in Oahu. So really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Um, 
I want to tell you, so I'm, I was born and raised on Maui, and um, in my career I've been um, at the Maui Economic Development Board for 33 years. In 2017 I retired from that, but in that whole time, um, Akaku has just been um, remarkably uh, responsible and responsive to the community and really has become a lifeline in the community. It, it's not, you know, it may have started out to be a nice to have, but now it's a necessity. Um, you know, with the way news comes to all of us now, you've got to filter through and everything. And because of the service they provide, for example, with, you know, broadcasting county council and um, administrative activities and so forth, we can hear it from the source. We're not hearing it interpreted by the New York Times or the Maui, whatever it is, right? Um, so I really value that, that I can go hear what actually happened in any kind of proceedings. Um, that is so critical nowadays. Um, so again, it's, it's not a nice to have, it's a necessity for us to stay informed on what's going on in our island, in our county, you know, et cetera. Um, and under the leadership of Jay April, He's just done a tremendous job. So if you were concerned about, okay, what outcomes are we getting if we require this investment? Um, I can assure you it's been amazing and so important to all of us to, as a way to stay informed. Um, and I would hope that um, Hawaiian Tail would welcome this opportunity to keep this a vibrant organization in our community, because um, we will be very grateful for that. It is just so important to all of us, and I'm talking from kids on up, um, to have this continue to be vibrant. Um, Jay's one of the most creative people I know, and from what Akaku was at one point to what it is today is so different. It's just so responsive to the needs that we have in our community to communicate, to get word out, to inform. So, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Johnson. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm Chivo Cheng Johnson. I'm the Director of Government Access at Akaku. And I also had the pleasure of um, being the second employee back in 92 and um, helped pick the location where we are now um, because I knew the woman that owned uh, Chronicle Cable Vision and was promised that there's a T1 trunk line right there and that we would get it. She sold Chronicle before we were up and running, and they just said, no way, you're not getting that. And I have had nothing but personal disappointment in the way our franchise has been treated. And you, and this, as, as Sean said, this is not blaming it on you, because this is a history with the DCCA and, and the different cable companies. They have a lot of money. See, their, watch their campaign contributions in the campaign spending reports. And that'll tell you who has a new summer home somewhere or a new car. And, and of course, that's, you know, I am just saying that in jest, but I'll tell you, we have been attacked from the certain people in the legislature. Um, and all of that just goes to show that this... You know, Spectrum is a is a juggernaut, and they pull out what eighty million dollars in Maui County alone every year, or around that, and yet they won't hit the button to give us high definition channel. I mean, that's criminal. And the the main point I would like to make is that you, as once again, as several people have said, you have an opportunity here. To, to right a lot of these wrongs. And especially for the state, especially for Maui County, we really need you to, to 
do some hard bargaining because these are public rights of way and this redacted application tells all of us nothing and that doesn't feel very good especially with what our history has taught us so I would only be able to welcome you to your fairly new positions I mean you've been for a little while but please um, do us right and and I I have faith that you will and the idea of having a, another hearing after all that black ink gets washed away and we can actually see what they're offering um, there's a lot of people in this room that are uh, not that you aren't but that you know are very familiar with the, the deep ins and outs of cable and contracts with cable so um, I leave it to you in in what I feel are potentially very good hands and I really thank you thank you um. Okay, we have no more registered speakers in person right now. I understand we have one virtual testifier, so I'm going to open up for virtual testimony at this time. Uh, Mr. Thomas Crowley. You can unmute yourself, Mr. Crowley. No. Mr. Crowley, are you there? Okay. Well, let, let us know if you hold on a second. back or no. okay if it comes back then, then let us know all right so is there anyone else wishing to testify that uh, we haven't called up yet and then anyone uh, virtually wishing to testify no so maybe what we'll do um, I mean, we would take a recess and maybe that would give some amount of time for people in case for some reason they couldn't get here um, because we did start this a little earlier um, and just to you know basically to try and accommodate what we have thought would be quite a few people who might want to testify um, but we can take a break and maybe we can that person we can somehow reconnect and we can figure out a way to make sure that he's able to testify uh, and so let's see it's now yeah maybe we're going to take an, an extended recess um, to 430 because that will give if there are other people that you are aware might have wanted to get here but um, for reasons that made it difficult for them well, I'll do that. Um, to make it on time he's back he's back okay well why don't we do this why don't we if he's on why don't we take his testimony and then we can take our break um, and break until 4 30 to give anyone else who might want to 
uh, testify an opportunity. Mr. Crowley, if you're online, can you hear us? Yeah, no, no audio. It's, I think his audio is still off. Oh, is he muted? Oh, there you go. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Just a feedback. I'll, I'll, I'll speak lower because I think you're getting some feedback. Can you can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Very quickly, I'm I'm only giving you the the perspective of a user. Um, just last week, Hawaiian Telecom installed fi fiber uh, internet to my home here in Maui Meadows, where they're going around installing it. And I'm in the process of testing it out right now. I don't think that, that the problem getting in here had anything to do with that, but <laughs> these technical things do happen. Uh, and, and I might like to switch to that. However, I'm tied right now to Spectrum because they can't provide me with television service. And if I call Spectrum and say, I want to get rid of my internet service to and, and keep my television service, I'm being told, oh, well, then the package you're on no longer applies and we're going to double your price and blah, 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 blah. So the having both of these uh, services available, both internet and uh, uh, television service, is almost necessary for the consumer out here to be able to play the game, if you will, the packaging game of, of where am I going to get a better a better price and so forth. Um, I also have appreciated listening to this meeting and Aka Ku explaining why uh, when I log on on the internet to uh, streaming services, it's nice and sharp. But, but when I log on through the TV, it's it's very fuzzy. And that's, I guess, because they only get a low definition feed there. Um, so certainly I would like, as, as a consumer, as a user, I would like to see that improved. So I support this uh, from a consumer standpoint, just from the standpoint of in order to have choice, for the consumer to have choice, I need both internet and television available from two providers. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Okay. okay. Um, if we don't have anyone else, uh, if there's no one else who is uh, wanting to testify virtually, why don't we do what we said we do? Um, take a break until 4.30. If you know of somebody who's on their way, uh, to let them know if they wanted to be here to testify, you know, we'll, we'll keep it open um, until then. Okay? Thank you. Recess? Yes. I'm going to take a recess. It is now 4.30-ish, and uh, we did, as we said, we would recess the hearing to give anyone else who might want to appear to testify either in person or virtually some opportunity to do so. Um, but it looks as if we don't have anyone else who has shown up, um, so we are at this time going to be closing down uh, the hearing and concluding it. But we do want to remind everyone that there is the opportunity to submit testimony in writing and um, by March 21st, 2024. So if you do know of anyone who wanted to testify orally, in person, um, or virtually, but just didn't get around to it, there is another opportunity to submit written testimony by the 21st. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.